Hi guys, good afternoon, a warm, warm welcome. Uh, we have a full house today, I think uh, close to 100 I've heard, so very excited to be here. I know it's been a really busy week for you all, um, too many launches, right? And uh, in the World Cup, of course, with, uh, was it Bangladesh last week, uh, Australia this uh, weekend, and semis against uh, West Indies tonight. I, I don't normally watch uh, cricket, but um, I think it's pretty crazy being here last night. Um, I think I got to experience a little bit of it, uh, just even at the hotel. Uh, I want to say that um, we never take your time for granted. Uh, we really never take it for granted. So we really super, super appreciate you guys making time to be here. Uh, we wanted to make today feel a little bit more special, so we said, let's go super cozy. So we got a smaller room. Um, so that we really make you guys feel uh, as comfortable as possible uh, in this more intimate setup. So thank you again for coming. I really, really appreciate it. Um, we're here as promised uh, to launch Me5. I had promised exactly four weeks ago today that I would be back in a month to launch Me5. Uh, given that the average month of the year has, I think, 30.4 days, we're slightly over-delivering here. Um, so we're here to launch Me5. So thank you guys for being here. We first announced Me5 at MWC this year uh, on February 24th, to be precise, in Barcelona. That was the first time we launched any product or we announced any product, I should say, in the world's biggest mobile stage. Big responsibility, a lot of work, but boy, it was awesome. And I was happy to see some of you there, um, you know, Samir was there with us, Deepak, Varun, David, Karan. Um, thank you guys for coming. It was good to have you there, and we had some uh, great chats and a good selfie out of it. You know, we've uh, had the tradition of creating really awesome high-end uh, smartphones, and it's been like that from the very beginning. Um, you guys all went through this beautiful history tunnel, the Me history tunnel that we set up in the back today. Uh, you had the chance to see the now legendary uh, Mi 1, which probably most of you hadn't seen yet. You know, it's kind of amazing. That was four and a half years ago, right? And it's such, uh, it looks like such an ancient, you know, piece in history, but it was actually one of the most important things um, that we've ever done uh, and probably the reason why we're here today. You know, the Mi 1 was the first dual-core smartphone to sell in China back in 2011. Uh, it was followed by Mi 2, which you also saw over there, which was the first smartphone in the world to ship with Snapdragon 600, which was a monster breakthrough from Qualcomm. Uh, Mi 3, which was the first one we brought to India, uh, it was the first Snapdragon in the world, uh, 800 AB Snapdragon, and also the first time anyone ever shipped a uh, smartphone with Tega 4. Uh, Mi 4 came after that top-end specs. Uh, it was our first stainless steel frame, and we sold over 10 million uh, Mi 4 around the world. Uh, and now, of course, um, we have Mi 5. Uh, so this evolution is truly amazing. That's why we decided to set it up for you guys here. I can't help but be very surprised at how much progress we and the whole industry, of course, have made in just four, four and a half years. Uh, the, the response to the Mi 5 launch uh, back in China was astounding. It was completely overwhelming. We had over 16 million registrations for the very, very first sale. Uh, I've been using Mi 5 for just over two months now. Uh, and I, I really love it. It feels like a combination of smart and, and beautiful, like, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne meets Ritik Roshnan. Um, and I just don't want to let it go anymore. It is such a, a great device to use. Uh, and of course, today, uh, it officially arrives here in India. And I want to start with the product video.
Right, so we're going to do things a little bit differently today. Um, those of you who attended uh, Google's events in the past may remember uh, this stage. Uh, that's when Jay and I used to do our Android keynotes together back in the day. So for old time's sake, uh, Jay and I are going to launch Mi 5 together today here in India. So rather than show you slides about product features that you can, that you've in many cases already know about and just doing that, we decided to keep things more casual, so we're going to just have a conversation with some visuals, of course, about the product today. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Money. All right. Why don't you have a seat, man? Cool. All right. Okay. So um, let's start with design. Uh, you know, from, um, from an industrial design perspective, uh, we started working on Mi 5 like two years ago. Because the design of Mi 5 started, actually, with this product, Mi Note. Mi Note introduced an entirely new design pattern in our industry. It was this 3D, uh, this 3D glass body uh, with a curved back that sort of hugs the exposed metal frame. And many people, by the way, thought that Mi Note was, possi Mi Note was possibly, if not definitely, the most beautiful Mi phone that we ever made. Uh, Wal Mossberg called it drop dead gorgeous, Jay. Um, yeah, I, I gotta it. believe that uh, that whole Samsung in the background didn't just end up there by coincidence. Um, so this was a big milestone for us in particular because we didn't actually ask Walt to do a review. He just said, hey guys, can I check out this phone? And then all of a sudden there was a review uh, published out there. So he loved uh, Me Note. And uh, the, this 3D glass body design was an industry first. Uh, and it's now Xiaomi's signature design. Mi 5 directly inherits uh, and builds on top of the Mi Note ID, but it's undoubtedly more beautiful, I think. It's more refined, it's more contemporary, it's definitely more sophisticated. The 3D, uh, the 3D glass body is the center element of Mi 5 with the Xiaomi signature design, and it's made of Gorilla Glass 4. Uh, the challenge here uh, is both design and mechanical. Uh, getting this curvature just right uh, so that the device feels slim, but of course, at the same time, there's enough room inside for all of the various different components, especially for a 5-inch device. So we're comparing the profiles of Mi Note and Mi 5 here. Uh, I think, Jay, this is the thing that you call the hand feel, right? H hand feel, yeah. I'm trying to make that term happen one, one day. Um, so yeah, hand feel, Mi, Mi Note was really great with hand feel, and that's because of the, the 3D curved glass. Um, and if you look at these lines here, so this is, this is where the curvature ends and meets with the metal rim. And so the, the rim on Mi Note was flat. So with Mi 5, we kind of extended the curvature of the glass to the rim. And you can see here the, the, the uh, curved glass meets with, with the metal. Um, so I can actually show you what this looks like on, on camera. Um, yeah, so here we have, here we have the Mi Note. Um, again, you can kind of see here, this is the, the curvature of Mi Note. This is the, the 3D glass over here. Um, now if I pick up, pick up the Mi 5 here, again, you can, see the, you can see the curve, and then right here is where the rim starts curving. So the rim here is angled, and this is because that's where the device sits in your hand. Um, and my favorite, actually my favorite detail, if you notice here, the buttons are also sitting on this curve, and they're angled. And the reason for that is that when the device is sitting in your hand, the buttons really shouldn't be straight. The buttons are angled, and they fit where they should be. Um, so we actually have a really, really sweet video, or at least I think it's sweet, um, where we transform the Mi Note to Mi 5. Uh, so if you see 
along the edge, along the sides here, the curvature is much more pronounced. Um, whereas on the top and bottom, it's, it's, it's more subtle. And again, that's because of, of hand feel. That's because where, where the device sits in your hand, it, it, it curves more nicely. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of wish that we could design all phones by just shooting lasers at them. That would be pretty sweet. Hand feel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can see the curves here. And I'll show you a few of these beautiful photos. Uh, so this one uh, is where we start talking about the camera, right? Tucked in in the corner. Uh, it's flat, flush on the surface of the device with a, with a flash, the two-tone flash right there. Everything tucked in neatly away on the corner uh, of the back of the device, which makes it look um, really beautiful. Um, you just saw the, the, uh, the metal rim that Jay was talking about. We have a beautiful CNC chamfer, which gives you this shiny finish uh, on the front of the device. Uh, and there is what it looks like with the screen when it's turned on. Uh, it's really, really thin. Uh, you're looking at the black version here. It comes in white. And we've also designed a gold version. It's a very, very light shade of gold that looks very elegant. Uh, here's uh, the gold version again with this beautiful pattern on the back here that looks super elegant. And then the other thing to notice too is that the chamfer, of course, the CNC chamfer is shiny gold. Uh, shinier, of course, than the rest of the device. So it looks, the whole package in gold uh, looks beautiful. It is my favorite color. Um, and the silver frame looks perfect on, on the white version, which you're looking at here. There they are together, white and gold. And these colors are simply gorgeous. Look at them together. Take as many photos as you want. <laughs> um, so here they are together once again. Uh, the black, the white, and the gold version. Looks great, right? I'll take my time because I'm seeing quite a few cameras up <laughs> here. <laughs> Should I go back? Uh, which one do you like? This one? Did you got this one? <laughs> we have all these for you in the media kit later. Um, so, um, do you guys want to take a look? All right, let me get us back here. Just get us back. You got this one already. Let's take a look at this. Quick photo. Close to the face. <laughs> Go to live view now. You got it? Cool with this view is that I can go like this. <laughs> yeah, you got it? Okay, one more. Can we go back to the slides? Just one more. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Did my best to stay out of the way there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, our level of confidence in, in this product was so high that for the first time in Xiaomi's history, we sent review units of Mi 5 to tech media in the U.S. And, and, and mind you, this was a challenge, of course, as you know, because the device wasn't being launched in the U.S. So, of course, why would people want to review it there? And yet, the reviews which came out are extraordinarily detailed. Um, your colleagues in the, in the media in the US have applied all the resources that they would normally to review a flagship device locally to review Mi 5. And we've been really, really happy to see uh, what's been coming out. Um, for example, Mashable compared it to a luxurious uh, piece of jewelry. And 
where while we were developing uh, this product with 3D glass, we started exploring a bunch of different materials uh, that could be used alternatively to glass. And that's why for Mi 5 Pro, we picked a ex really exquisite 3D ceramic body, uh, which is super, super strong and durable. Uh, it's actually on a, uh, on a, a hardness scale called the Moss scale. Uh, it's an eight, whereas steel is about a four, four and a half, and diamond is all the way up to a 10, right? So it's obviously much closer to the diamond than it is to the steel in terms of how resistant and durable it is. Uh, it's high-grade zirconia. It's a special nanomaterial uh, that's very, very uh, smooth, almost really pleasing to the touch, kind of like a marble or jade type of thing. Uh, the main benefit is resistance. Now, manufacturing this uh, is an extremely rigorous uh, process, which posed potentially one of the biggest challenges that we've ever had uh, from a supply chain perspective. It's actually really hard to make a perfect uh, you know, curved ceramic uh, case for Mi 5, which is why uh, it's been a, a super, super limited edition um, in China. Um, you get to see it here when you try it today. Uh, it's just a really beautiful device, just extremely hard to make, right? So it's been a really, really limited edition for us uh, back in China, but I still wanted to talk about it. Um, I want to talk about the Frong fingerprint sensor for a second here. There's actually quite a bit more to say about um, this than most people would think. Um, with a, a front fingerprint sensor being a relatively common thing in the industry for the past couple of years, you might ask, why didn't Xiaomi do that sooner on one of its flagship devices? And, and the truth is, while it's, it's actually easy to design a phone with a front fingerprint sensor, doing it really well is actually quite hard. There's a few challenges in doing this here. Uh, first of all, keeping the phone slim while trying to maintain a high screen-to-body ratio. And also having a camera that doesn't stick out. You might ask, what does the camera have to do with the fingerprint sensor? They're on completely you know, separate sides uh, and everything. Well, I want to take a close look and show you how actually intimately related um, the two are. Basically, there are two possible designs for a front fingerprint sensor in the industry. You can, you can have a round fingerprint sensor, or you can have a rectangular, which is a narrow, a sh uh, uh, less tall fingerprint sensor. Now, if you have a, a round fingerprint sensor, that means you take up more room uh, on the bottom of the device, on the chin. And if you want to keep a balanced design, you then have to have a much larger amount of space on the forehead as well. So if you zoom in to see how that looks, so you end up with a device uh, with a much larger forehead, um, as you can see here uh, on, on your left. And it's, of, of course, okay for most people, but it's actually not um, that beautiful. Um, it looks better if the forehead can be made a little bit shorter. Uh, and if I flip these around, you'll see the consequences on the back of the device. Um, the problem with having a much shorter forehead, which is the space on the top of the device, is that you kind of force the camera, which takes quite a bit of room uh, if you want to put it uh, flush to the device, you kind of force it to go to the back of the device. Um, and of course, what happens is because the camera is behind the display, it ends up sticking out quite a bit. Uh, which, from a design perspective, also doesn't look as beautiful or as balanced aesthetically. So the reason why we spent two years designing Mi 5 is as simple as this. We didn't want to compromise uh, on any of these dimensions. We wanted a balanced design with a display taking up the majority of the front of the device, and we wanted to tuck the camera away into the corner on the back, and we wanted it to be flat. Right? So all in all, this was a pretty spectacular uh, challenge from a mechanical and design point of view. And the result is quite successful, as you can see here. Um, you can see that the, a, a significantly larger part, a noticeably larger part of the front of the device is actually taken by the display uh, on Mi 5 compared to the other devices. You can see that the forehead uh, of uh, Mi 5 is also uh, shorter, which gives it this uh, larger uh, uh, screen-to-body ratio. Um, and what you also notice is that we managed to have the speaker, the front camera, and the, the proc sensor vertically aligned, by the way, right? So they're not all the way on the top of the device. They're, vertic they're vertically aligned, so, so uh, vertically centered, I should say. So it looks also more balanced uh, from a design perspective. And the most noticeable achievement, without a doubt, uh, is when you look at these devices from the back, right? Mi 5 is the only device that has a flat camera that's sort of tucked away neatly into the corner 
uh, it's a much more beautiful design, much more subtle, um, much more aesthetically pleasing, um, for sure. This was a major, major engineering challenge, and we're pretty happy that we actually got this. Um, you can comfortably say that Nephi is one of the most elegant pieces of design that you'll ever pick up. Now, uh, I was talking about the fingerprint sensor. I want to talk a bit about the home button. Um, for the fingerprint sensor to remain accurate over time, you can't let it scratch easily. So what we did is we added a ceramic uh, protected cover uh, on top of the home button. And we're using ceramic instead of sapphire uh, because ceramic has a higher permittivity and responsiveness. It's actually the right surface if you want to have a capacitive functionality behind it. Uh, so that's why we chose um, uh, ceramic. Uh, and the fingerprint uh, system on Mi 5 from a software perspective is really, really smart. It actually does unsupervised training uh, which uh, some of you, for example, with ex experience in speech recognition may, may recollect, so that it keeps improving over time. Uh, GSM Arena said uh, unlocking is even faster than the Touch ID V2. Uh, that was their experience with the, the fingerprint sensor on Mi 5. Uh, now, uh, one of the key design elements uh, on uh, Mi 5 is that the, the front of the device is really clean because of the navigation keys. In fact, you basically only see the home button in the center, and you have a really nice clicky feel to it. Uh, but on either side of the home button, where you'd normally see uh, a key, the, you know, the marking for a key, they're actually essentially invisible. The recents and back keys are essentially invisible, except you know that they're there because you can actually feel them when you touch. By not having a visual label, a visual sort of mark, you keep the design simple, more elegant. Now. Uh, Jay, that has, of course, stirred quite a bit of controversy, which I know you like talking about. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think Ars Technica said that this was the worst part of, or the, the weakest part of uh, the Mi 5, Mi 5 design. Um, I, I actually really like it, and it's not just because it's beautiful. Uh, I think it's actually more useful. So let me, let me just show you, um, let me show you why here. So uh, I have two devices. This is the white Mi 5, and then there's the black Mi 5. And you can see it, it looks clean, right? There's no printed navigation keys, you just have this home button. Um, and if I power on this Black Me 5, you can see these down here, these, these little lights. These, this is the, uh, the Recents button and the Back button. And again, it, it looks better, but it's also more functional. Um, so MIUI lets you change uh, the, the Back and Recents buttons from left to right, so you can do whatever, um, whatever suits you. Um, and and you know, it, it is much more easy to use that way. Uh, the other big advantage of the home button, the physical home button, is that when the device is sitting on a table, it's much easier to press, right? This is the big difference between front fingerprint sensor and back fingerprint sensor. When you have a device on the table, you can just press it and unlock it. The disadvantage to this is that when you're using the device, when you're you know, just browsing around, um, using the physical button is actually more of a pain. Um, so as Hugo mentioned, we actually made the, the home button uh, capable of doing capacitive touch as well. So you can just tap instead of, you know, you can, you can press, um, but you can also just tap to go home really quickly. So it, it gives you the best, best of both worlds, in my opinion. You get the physical home button for when, when the device is sitting on the table, and then you get the capacitive button for, for actual usage. Yeah, I personally use the capacitive all the time. I find that to be uh, much more convenient. Um, so small little things that uh, we really pay a lot of attention to. It's what uh, you get when you really take your time designing a new product, uh, as we did with Mi 5. I want to talk about weight really, really quickly here. Uh, notice that I put weight in a big red uh, bubble here, almost as if it was another feature of the device, because it actually is. It's a very important consequence of the design. You know, the first thing that people say when they pick up Mi 5 is how nice it feels. And then they immediately think they say is how light it is as soon as they pick it up. Uh, even with uh, the 3D glass body that we have, it's only 129 grams. It's almost hard to believe. As a quick comparison, uh, purely because I know many of you carry iPhones, uh, this is how Mi 5 compares to the iPhone 6S, for example. Uh, it's noticeably lighter. You can actually feel it in your hand. And it's especially hard to believe when I tell that Mi 5 carries a 3000 mAh um, battery. And we're using the highest density uh, battery technology that exists today. Uh, now, Jay, this is what Ars Technica said. <laughs> uh, they said some people think Mi 5 is too light. Yeah, what I mean, do you think? I, I actually think that's kind of funny. Um, you know, I, I, 
I personally think that Mi5 Mi5 strikes a great great balance, right? And we have I think we have some data here. Um, you know, at at five inches, Mi5 is is thin, it's light, but it has this big battery. Um, I think I think you know, for people who say that it's too light, maybe maybe their phones are too heavy. I don't know. I mean, I think once you use it, um, it really feels great. Indeed. Um, by the way, I highly recommend the Ars Technica review. It's really well written. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, all right, so 129 grams, uh, 3D glass body, and uh, the metal frame, the super slim metal frame that gives you this unbelievably light feel. Um, uh, definitely, you have to try it to, to really experience it. I want to talk about performance next. Um, you know, to get everyone thinking about uh, what insanely fast means, insanely being a term that I use all the time, um, we uh, initially created a, a, a few teaser videos for Mi 5. This was back in, in February before MWC. Uh, we you know, looked to find out ways to show speed records, like what's something that someone can do really fast, faster than anyone else, and we recorded these cool videos, and you probably saw some of them, like the guy with the Rubik's Cube and the guy skipping rope. Um, to launch here in India, we said, let's take the same idea, but let's try to localize it a little bit uh, to, to India, of course. So we found these really talented YouTubers uh, that, that were pretty impressive, we thought. Uh, one is, uh, is Mutu, who's a tabla player from, from Bangalore. He plays tabla really, really fast. And the second one is, is rapper K-Deep uh, from Gujarat, um, who raps really, really fast as well. And the videos look really funny. And we're still looking for more talent. There's quite a, <laughs> quite a bit to choose from um, we've found so far. So we've engineered Mi 5 for you know, breakneck uh, speed. And I want to talk about some of the technological elements, the technological breakthroughs behind uh, this. Uh, of course, it starts with Snapdragon 820. Uh, this is the Qualcomm chipset with the best reviews over the last three generations by far. It's most definitely the powerhouse. And uh, Mi 5 brings it to India for the first time. Uh, first in India with Qualcomm Snapdragon 820. The Mi 5 that we're launching here today comes with the SD820, of course, clocked at 1.8 gigahertz, uh, 3 gigs, and 32 gigs. And I want to tell you, tell you a bit more about Snapdragon 820, uh, which powers um, this baby. Uh, Snapdragon 820 is the first uh, Qualcomm chipset to, to use the quad-core cryo architecture. Um, now, if I go back a few years, I'm sure you guys remember when Snapdragon 800 came out. Uh, and it was a huge step up uh, from Qualcomm when it first launched. And the main reason for that was one very, very important thing, vertical integration. Every part of the Snapdragon 800 back you know, a few years ago was internally designed by Qualcomm, including their CPU architecture. All right, so everything designed together. In the last uh, two flagship processors, uh, 808, 810, Qualcomm used uh, an external CPU architecture. They used an ARM-based CPU architecture. And with A20, after, of course, a long period of research and, and development, Qualcomm is coming back to the fully vertical integrated approach where uh, every part of the chipset, every major part of the chipset was designed internally by Qualcomm engineers themselves. And that is Cryos architecture, which is uh, Qualcomm's latest proprietary CPU architecture. And it really, really flies. Um, it's a... Uh, First of all, it's a uh, four-core architecture, and it uses a big little type approach uh, by just having different speeds between the two uh, uh, performance cores and the other two cores. Uh, and it, this is what it looks like in comparison with uh, the Exynos 8890, uh, which is what the latest Galaxy S7 here in India uh, comes with, which is an eight-core architecture. Um, 
Cryo, uh, oh, Snapdragon 820 has two cryo performance cores. They're clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, and Exynos uh, has four uh, performance cores, uh, which are clocked at up to 2.6 gigahertz. Now, Jay, uh, an octa-core uh, chipset clocked at 2.6 gigahertz surely uh, will completely outperform a processor with only four cores at 1.8, right? Uh, turns, out, turns out no. <laughs> it turns out that uh, the, the quad-core in the Snapdragon 820 is actually better. Um, so we have some data here. So this is, this is again, against the uh, S7 that ships here in India. Um, and the, the Snapdragon 820 outperforms the S7. And, and you know, I think like Hero is referring to this. A lot of people just kind of look at things on paper, and they're like, oh, eight cores, 10 cores must be better than four cores. 2.6 gigahertz must be better than 1.8. Um, you know, obviously, that's not true. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, this puts it to rest, right? We're back to a point where these two performance cores are, are really outperforming, um, you know, more cores at higher clock speed. Um, and there are some great, there are some reviews that actually talk about this. Um, yeah, this one's from GSM Arena. Uh, so, yeah, the single core performance on Cryo uh, really shines. This is the best single core uh, CPU uh, on an Android device. Um, it doubles the performance of the A57, which is what was in the Nexus 6P last year. Um, and then, then my favorite one, actually, um, again, with Mi 5, we, we focused on, on the best device in practice, right? And this, this review really hits it. Um, Mi 5 is actually the highest performing Android gaming platform on there. And that's because of the 1080p screen. Um, if you're using a 1080p screen, you're not pushing you know, twice as many pixels for the, the 2K display. And in practice, it means it's the fastest CPU. It's the best, uh, best for gaming. So, so that's, you know, we're not really looking at the best device on paper. Uh, we're looking at the best device in your hand. And, and you know, I, think we, I, think we did, I think we did that here. Hand feel and performance, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's quite a bit more in the 820 chipset, um, which we're, we're not going to talk about. But it includes the Adreno 530 uh, GPU, uh, the Spectra Image Signal Processor ISP, which I will come back to in a bit. Uh, and it also, of course, supports Quick Charge 3 uh, on Mi 5. Uh, so all in all, looking at some quick uh, comparisons here, uh, much faster CPU than the previous uh, chipset, Snapdragon 810, um, also much faster GPU. Uh, LPDDR4 RAM, which is noticeably faster than the previous generation, and Mi 5 uses UFS 2.0 flash, which is much, much faster uh, than EMC 5.0. I won't go into details. And I'll leave it up to you to answer this question uh, or to ask you yourself, is, you know, could Mi 5 be the fastest smartphone um, here in India? I asked the same question uh, on Redmi Note 3, um, so I'll leave, it, I'll leave it to you guys to answer that question. I want to talk about camera for a little bit. Uh, there's tons of technological breakthroughs in the camera on Mi 5. You know, we've really, really tried to push the envelope across a few different dimensions here. And I want to show you a few, a few examples. Uh, so this is Mi 5 with a, a pretty severe backlight situation. And you can see um, uh, that it holds uh, itself pretty well. Um, it's a beautiful shot. Let me stand on this side here so you can really, really see the images. By the way, EXIF data on every photo uh, on the bottom right if you want to see it. Uh, this is just a normal light uh, scenario with a little bit of shadow. Uh, this is a low light. We'll come back to low light in a bit. Um, Mi 5 does really, really well in these cases. Uh, this is a much more dynamic scene. So this is a moving scene. Uh, cap captured at super fast shutter speed. You can see here 1 over 2300. So it's a very, very fast one. Uh, these images were all taken by, by employees uh, who were uh, traveling for, on vacation at around the time when we were getting Mi 5 ready for launch. And of course, we have some, some camera clicks um, from, from colleagues here in India as well. Uh, in fact, that's mine. Uh, so this, this image became relatively famous um, uh, because when I, I, first of all, I was in Brazil visiting my parents. This was over Chinese New Year. And I was walking around their garden. And I was just randomly taking photos. And I just took a quick shot of this plant that I thought was interesting without thinking much about it. And I, of course, I stripped out the uh, EXIF data because at that point, we had said nothing about the Mi 5 camera yet. So let's not give away the specs. I stripped out the EXIF data, and then I posted it. And then there were quite a few articles that came out, and I, I loved them, including articles that said, maybe this is actually not a real photo from a Mi 5, maybe it come, came from a DSLR. You know, and it was kind of fun then going back and forth uh, with various bloggers. I don't know if Francis arrived. Where's Francis? He's over there. Oh, there you are. Um, that was fun. And, um, uh, and, and it was great, because all of a sudden, people are saying, oh, is this? 
coming from a phone? Is he coming from a camera? And it was really a lot of fun. And if you look at the detail when you zoom in, it's actually quite astounding what I, was man what I managed to, to capture with just a, a quick snap without even thinking too much about it. Of course, later on, I did publish the EXIF data. I sent it to Francis first, uh, since he was the first one to write about it, uh, and everything was clear. I think this is your photo, right, Jay? Yeah, so I'm not a good photographer. So these, these photos were taken in uh, Jaipur. Um, this, this is obviously a good image. One, one of the things you should notice here is actually in the bottom left, you can, or bottom right, sorry, you can see that this was taken in a car. The car was basically just stopped. You know, I, I think I maybe spent half a second pulling out my phone and taking this picture. And that's really, once you use Mi 5, that's the biggest takeaway for me, is that it is super consistent. It's super consistent to get shots like this without much effort. Um, so we have, we have a couple more, uh, I think, shots from, from there. Yeah, th I think this is a wind palace. Again, like, I think we spent, I spent maybe a second on this. Um, and you get really great detail, great lighting everywhere. Um, <laughs> this, uh, this is, Kay I think most of you probably know Kayleen. Kayleen literally picked up this random kid, just kind of kidnapped her, and then we, we pulled out the phone and took a picture of it. Um, you know, no setup. Uh, and it's a beautiful shot, right? It looks really great, great detail. Um, I, think we have, I think we have a couple more. Hopefully she returned the child. Yeah, I think she, I think she did. <laughs> We'd have to check on that later. Uh, this, this I know is from New Zealand. This was taken by uh, one of our colleagues in China. Uh, beautiful shot. Uh, yeah, I think a, a couple more from New Zealand. Uh, this, one is, uh, this one is Brighton Beach in, in, uh, in Melbourne. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, and these are all you know, raw, unedited photos. Uh, now, a really cool feature that we've all talked about a little bit already that I, I want to come back to, and we're going to take a different approach here today, is OIS, you know, which is uh, optical image uh, stabilization. Uh, we first shipped OIS on MeNote, which is a larger screen device, of course, as you know. Um, you know, OIS makes the camera larger. The entire camera module becomes physically larger, which means it's difficult to fit it into a smaller device, you know, to the point that, you know, on, on iPhone, the smaller uh, device doesn't actually have that feature. Uh, in, a, in a typical OIS uh, approach, which is what the industry has implemented uh, to date, uh, it, it uses a two-axis configuration, which basically means um, uh, your stabilization is relative to, to the two rotational axes, right? So if you're moving the device almost as if it was in place. It responds appropriately. Uh, Mi 5 introduces a new kind of OIS, uh, which uses four axes instead of two. So you have the same rotational axis, but then you have also transversal axes that respond if you're moving the phone laterally or, or, uh, or up and down uh, to correct for not only shakes, but also for movement, for sideways movement, for example, if you're trying to take a, a, a more distant shot. Um, so if you're taking a, a photo of a more distant subject, for example, it's really, really, really good. Um, by the way, if, if you actually take the PCB out uh, and you try to play with the camera, you can see that the sensor is actually floating inside of the module, right? And of course, there's uh, f very fine motors that can respond very quickly and make, make it actually move. But it's pretty amazing how much it moves uh, when it's actually uh, working. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, so four axis OIS is great. It's really, really great for video. Um, this is where it really shines because, you know, obviously video, you're holding the camera for much longer. Um, we, we put together this, this video here. Yeah, so on the left, there's no OIS. On the right is the regular two axis OIS. And in the middle is Mi 5 with four axis OIS. Um, you can see, obviously, the image is a lot more, the video is a lot more stable on Mi 5. The other important thing here is that uh, on Mi 5, the flowers are always in focus, whereas without OIS in video, I mean, the flower is almost never in focus in this image. Um, so it is really, really great for video. Um, and I think, actually, I think actually we have a, a better way to show this if you aren't convinced. Um, so, uh, so this thing is uh, it's, uh, it's called a body shake machine. It's kind of like a shake weight, but for your whole body. Um, so I don't know if you guys know. Oh, hopefully I don't fall because my shoes are untied. Um, so I'm going to turn this on. So basically what this does is it, it moves around. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a camera without. I, we can disable OIS in settings. I can, I can, uh, sorry, I have, we have a special APK where I can disable OIS. I'll show you what it looks like without it and then with it. So uh, let's, uh, let's see if this works here. OK. So oh, God. OK. All right, be All careful right. now. <laughs> so this is, this is without. This is without OIS. Um, so now if I turn it on, which is actually a little hard to do right now. 
All right, you can see the difference, right? It's, it's, it's pretty obvious, it's pretty, pretty um, clear. Again, when it's disabled, the big thing is that Hugo is, is almost not in focus at all. Um, and then when I turn it on, oh God, this is really kind of a workout. Uh, you know, it's, it's totally clear and most of them, well, I don't know if we want that to be in focus, but, but uh, it is in focus when you need it. Um, so, so this machine actually will be available outside um, in the experience zone, so you can, uh, you can try it yourself and see what it looks like um, with, with whatever, whatever phone you have. All right, can't shake that off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, it's still going. Okay, uh, thanks Jay. Oh, it's still on. So let's talk about the camera sensor here for a second, uh, which is of course very important. Mi 5 uh, ships with a really advanced sensor. It's uh, the Sony IMX, uh, sorry, IMX 298. And Mi 5 is actually one of the, wor the first devices in the world to ship with this sensor. Uh, 16 megapixels, uh, it's uh, powering a six-piece lens and uh, f2.0 aperture. This is for the rear camera. Uh, it supports phase detection autofocus. Uh, and more importantly, it's the first camera that we've ever shipped that features uh, DTI, which is uh, deep trench isolation. Uh, it's something that just gives you much better color. Uh, and the image processor uh, on uh, Mi 5, you know, the image processor being like the CPU for the camera, uh, is, is really, really, really good. Um, Mi 5 uses the onboard ISP, of course, that's part of the chipset of A20. Uh, it supports uh, 4K video, uh, skin color enhancement that's all done automatically. It does pretty good with low light enhancement as well. Uh, and it also does sunlight display uh, and uh, local tone mapping, sorry, local tone mapping, which is kind of like sunlight display uh, for the camera. Uh, so that's the ISP. Uh, this is an example of a pretty good night shot uh, that's taken with Mi 5. Uh, Mi 5 supports uh, up to 32 seconds of exposure when you put it in manual mode. Uh, so you have this beautiful light trail photo uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was taken by one of our uh, employees. Uh, this was uh, visibly taken in Hong Kong. Uh, it's beautiful. Another uh, image shot, uh, night shot here taken um, obviously also in Hong Kong, and you can see how crisp it is and the noise level is, is absolutely within uh, acceptable uh, range, at least to my eye. Uh, another beautiful low light photo, this is a twilight photo um, in, uh, taken in Beijing, uh, that looks really gorgeous. And 4K video, as I said, which is also supported um, by Mi 5. So, all right, uh, for the front camera, uh, Mi 5 ships with the same front camera that we had on Mi Note, which is a 4 uh, megapixel uh, uh, front camera with very large pixels, 2 micron uh, pixels. Uh, bigger pixels, of course, give you uh, better resolution and uh, also uh, better low light performance. 40% uh, uh, larger than average than the, uh, the regular, the sort of ordinary front camera pixel that you'd find. Uh, Beautify, which is a signature feature uh, of uh, all Xiaomi devices continues to get better, uh, especially, of course, uh, for selfies, although Beautify, a lot of people don't know, also works on the rear camera. You just have to turn it on. Uh, and it shows the age. Uh, that's how it actually calculates the beauty profiles that will be applied. And it works really well for guys, too, especially very handsome ones <laughs> like Manu Jane. Um, we just took this earlier today. Uh, so the, the front camera on Mi 5 is uh, astoundingly good. Um, I, really, I really can vouch for that. So th this is the camera round up here. Uh, the most important thing uh, for video, if you like taking video, is 4-axis. That really does make a huge difference on 4-axis OIS and a bunch of other uh, features that just give you uh, better photos. And we've really spent a lot of time making this work well together. I want to say a few words about the display. Uh, people in the industry talk about borderless display, displays that have no bezels. Um, uh, the reality, there is no such a thing as a, as a no bezel borderless display. It's just not possible physically because you have all of these sort of different components that are just beyond the display that take room. Yeah, you, you just, there's no way to get rid of them. Um, but we've done the best possible job we could uh, to make the bezels as, as thin as possible. Uh, they're really, really uh, ultra thin on Mi 5. Uh, and our display ships with a ton of really useful features. I'm not going to go into them in detail here. Uh, but for example, uh, reading mode, which uh, we talked about as part of Redmi Note 3, is also supported on Mi 5. And uh, in night display, which is actually really good, it brings uh, the, uh, the brightness of the display below one nit, uh, which is really terrific. Uh, precisely speaking, it's 0.7 nits, uh, or 0.7 nit, uh, which is really good for, for reading at night. 
Uh, a typical phone in this category, five inches, would be anywhere between 350 and 500 nit. Uh, Mi 5 goes all the way to 600 nits in brightness. Um, in fact, uh, GSM Arena tested it and they measured 628 nits worth of, of luminance. This is an extraordinarily bright display and that matters really a ton. Uh, so here's a clo close up view. Uh, five inch devices usually ship with anywhere between 12 and 14 LEDs, right? The LED is this uh, array here, typically at the bottom of the display that shoots light in and that allows you to actually see stuff. And there's a whole you know, mechanism that makes the, the, light, the light bounce out so that you can actually see it through the LCD. Uh, when we wanted a brighter display, uh, we, wanted, we, we thought, well, that means we have to add more light. So instead of 12 to 14 LEDs, we wanted to push all the way to 16 LEDs. Now to get 16 LEDs in, uh, there's a whole lot of engineering work that we had to do. But one of the decisions that we made was to increase the size of the display ever so slightly from 4.95 to 5.15 uh, inches. And that allows us to get two extra LEDs in. And that made a world of difference when it comes to, to brightness. So 16 LED display, uh, ultra bright display. And it's also very, very power efficient because of the LEDs that we chose, which are the highest end LEDs. Uh, Mi 5 also supports sunlight display, which keeps getting better. I think you guys are already pretty familiar with this. You've seen on many of our devices uh, so far. Uh, here, uh, uh, this is a photo taken um, outdoors uh, by, by uh, Shrikant from our team. We compared Mi 5 uh, outdoors, uh, same brightness level of the display, uh, as far as the software is concerned, with Mi, uh, Mi 5 and Mi 4. Uh, and you can see a noticeable difference here. You know, these are, of course, uh, unedited photos. Uh, so you'll find that the Mi 5 display will give you a much better experience, especially in sunlight. Uh, it's much, much more vibrant. Um, but it's also better indoors, too. Uh, so this is a photo taken indoors. Uh, it's a, just a gaming uh, experience. And you can clearly tell, given the same softer brightness level, uh, Mi 5 actually is a brighter display. Uh, now, Jay, Mashable poses uh, a question here. Why don't we use a 2K display? <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's just along the same lines, right? I, I, I don't think you can look at a single spec in isolation, right? It, it's not just about the PPI. I think you have to look at the display you know, as a whole. Um, one of the reasons why we decided to cram in those extra LED lights is because when you look at the Mi 5 display, the brightness really pops out at you. I mean, again, if you're looking at it on paper, you might say, oh, it has half the pixels. But when you look at it in person, it looks, it looks really great. Um, and the other advantage there is that, that with, with the 1080p display, we actually save a lot of battery, right? Because we're not pushing the pixels required for a 2K display. Um, so you know, I think, again, we're not really designing phones for, for you know, a spec sheet. We're designing phones for the way they work and the way they work in practice. Uh, and Mi 5 works really, really great. The display looks really good. And most importantly, the device has great battery life with, with an awesome display. All right. Since we're on the topic of the display, I want to talk briefly about Mi Protect, uh, which is uh, a product that we've offered for a little while here in India. It's basically uh, uh, an insurance policy against uh, accidental damage. Uh, displays obviously can, can crack, uh, even if you have the highest quality protection on them. Um, and uh, as is the case with Gorilla Glass uh, 4, of course. Uh, so Mi Protect gives you peace of mind against any potential uh, accidents, not only with the display, but also um, <laughs> <laughs> things like uh, uh, a toy bowl accident if you drop your uh, phone into water for some reason um, and you get, you, know, you get it out quickly, uh, you know, uh, it still probably won't work, right? So uh, uh, although in some cases you'd be surprised. But uh, Mi Protect gives you really, really good protection um, for against all these unplanned type accidents and we are running a special promotion for it at $4.99. Uh, this is for next week only on me.com. After that, it goes back to the normal price. But $4.99, one year protection against any kind of accidental damage, which is a pretty good deal. It's a really, really good deal. OK, well, <laughs> talking about a big deal, why is infrared a big deal, Jay? Yeah, so, so infrared is, 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 is really good. It's really good if you do it well. Um, and this is something we focused on quite a bit. Um, so we, we, you know, we have thousands of devices, but we spent a lot of time trying to get devices in India. And this is where we rely on, on Mi fans. Um, in some cases, they will even send us their remotes uh, so that we can, we can test it and make sure that, that we have all the coverage. Um, so we have hundreds of brands. Um, and in particular, you know, I think probably now, maybe in a week, uh, air conditioners are going to be super useful, uh, especially here in Delhi. Um, but the, the most used 
IR device in your home is most likely your set-top box. Uh, and this is where we spent a lot of time. Again, um, we have coverage for mo most of the uh, DTH, major DTH operators, Airtel, Tata Sky. Um, the, the challenge here is that, you know, there are actually, even for one operator, there might be five or six different set-top boxes, and they use different IR implementations, and it won't work. Um, and again, here's where we rely on me fans who every day will call us and tell us, hey, this doesn't work on the Tata Sky cable box. Here's the, the serial number, and I'll even send you the remote. Um, so, so we update this, I think, every week, um, adding more brands and, and making coverage better. Um, and it's super easy to set up. It's just it's three, three steps. Select uh, the type, select the brand, and then pair it. Um, and then, you know, of course, once, once it is set up, uh, you can actually share automatically. Uh, Mi Remote shares the settings to other devices on the same uh, Wi-Fi network. So if you, you know you don't have to do the setup for your parents as well. Um, so yeah, Mi Remote is is really great, and it's really great here because we spent a lot of time working on coverage and making sure that it works for you know for all of those brands. We've gotten quite a bit of great um, feedback on on infrared. We started with we actually had it on Mi 4 last year. Uh, and, but starting from Mi 4C, every single, every single device from Xiaomi has infrared now. Um, it, it, we're actually even uh, 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 surprised by, by the take up uh, of, of infrared on our devices from the moment when we started shipping an app that really knew how to control all of the devices in your home. And that's the key thing here, right? It's not just having the hardware feature, but it's actually putting the software behind it and making sure that it's updated on a regular basis. Um, so that's infrared. I want to say maybe just a quick thing on wireless connectivity. And I'll just summarize it with a quote from, uh, from the review on The Verge, uh, which uh, basically talks about uh, the Qualcomm X12 modem in a nutshell, which is really one of the most important parts of the Snapdragon 820 chipset. Um, Vlad talks about how he got unexpectedly uh, amazing coverage uh, from, from his Mi 5, even when going underground. And this really is something that we put a lot of work in. Again. Uh, in India in particular, things like drop calls, transition time from a voice call to data, and so on and so forth. Those are problems that people face every day, more so than any other place, which is why it's really important for us to put so much work into it. Another reason why we also uh, insist on shipping Qualcomm devices, uh, because of their modems. They are the best in the industry. Uh, Mi 5 is the second device that we're launching here in India that supports Volti out of the box. Uh, so it is completely future-proof. Volti is around the corner. Uh, I gave you guys a demo at the Redmi Note 3 launch. Uh, it's considerably better from a quality perspective. It really kind of is game-changing for something as simple as a voice call. And just like also with Redmi Note 3, Mi 5 supports all of the LTE bands here in India, today's bands and tomorrow's bands. So you, you, you buy Mi 5 and you know that this device is going to work on any LTE network here in India, you know, for years to come including band 5 and band 41. Uh, Mi 5 is our very, very first device to ship with Android M, uh, which underlies uh, Mi UI 7. And we're pretty excited to be uh, one of the first uh, to ship M uh, actually out of the box uh, here in India. Uh, there's quite a bit more behind the Snapdragon uh, 820 and Mi 5. Um, NFC is another feature that we support. Um, uh, and USB Type-C, of course, with a reversible connector. Uh, it's uh, our second device to ship with uh, Type-C adapter. Uh, so that's Mi 5. Uh, we really filled it with as much technology as we could, but really because we wanted an experience to be above anything else we had ever done. Uh, and I think we got there. Uh, we're really proud of Mi 5. Uh, to summarize the features here, uh, I've talked about uh, 4-axis OIS, which you saw live here on stage uh, with uh, Jay shaking it. And uh, UFS 2.0, noticeable difference in memory performance. Uh, we talked about Gorilla Glass 4, fingerprint sensor, uh, this new approach that we took on the design of the display so we could get more brightness out of it, 600 nits, supports quick charge 3.0, uh, and of course, uh, 4G dual SIM. And with all these technological breakthroughs um, in performance, in memory, and, and uh, all of these other things, we decided that the Mi 5 slogan was going to be fast as light. Uh, in addition to its speed, uh, Mi 5 is also just as light. Uh, it's, a, it's a lightness that you're going to notice the moment that you pick it up. So fast as light. Get it, Jay? Yeah, yeah. I think I got it. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk about price. 
So uh, as we normally do, let's, uh, let's put this in context first and foremost. We um, uh, not too many devices to actually pick from in this case because we were looking at uh, across a, a, a very small peer group, if you will, which are basically the latest and greatest 5-inch flagship devices in the world. Um, so we looked at uh, obviously the latest iPhone, uh, LG G5, which is not even launched here in India yet, but there's an estimated price from 91 mobiles, um, uh, Galaxy S7. Uh, so these are all devices roughly in the 5-inch category, um, and uh, we've talked about our achievements with Mi 5, with the camera, uh, with uh, the battery, with how light it is, and so on and so forth. But generally speaking, we're looking at uh, a price range here in the 50,000 50, uh, territory, uh, which is quite a bit of money, particularly here in India. Uh, so Mi 5 uh, is coming to India at <laughs> uh, for the 3 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte version. It's the only Snapdragon 820 that you can buy here in India. And here it is. So this is uh, our experience zone. And in fact, it's just part of the experience zone that you'll get to try um, uh, right after we're done here. Uh, we also have more units available for you to test outside, and our team is going to show you how to get there. Um, that's Mi 5, uh, fast as light. Uh, our first sale will be next week on April 6th at 11 a.m. on Mi.com. Uh, and it's just in time for my favorite time of the year, which is Mi Fan Festival. That's uh, our uh, anniversary, if you will, um, uh, next week, Mi Fan Festival. And it will also be available uh, through partner platforms after a few weeks. Uh, but starting next week on Mi.com uh, for Mi Fan Festival. Uh, so this is Mi 5. Maybe we can do another couple of photos here now that we have the price. Um, Clean them off a little bit. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, with the price, I'll go here. <laughs> 